The topic of this week is developing and presenting the problem. We will first talk about two types of reasoning. The means for identifying specific research problems come from two methods of reasoning inductive and deductive reasoning. With inductive reasoning, individual observations are tied together into specific hypotheses, which are grouped into more general explanations that are united into theory. In this type of reasoning, we move from the level of observations to that of theory requires many individual studies that test specific hypotheses. We begin with observations, then offer theoretical explanation. Deductive reasoning moves from a theoretical explanation of events to specific hypotheses that are tested against or compared with reality to evaluate whether the hypotheses are correct. In fact, within any given study, both are useful. At the beginning of study, the researcher deduces hypotheses from relevant theories and concepts and induces hypotheses from relevant findings in other research. Most of time, a problem for the beginners is how to find a research problem. Below are the characteristics of a good problem. Can you conduct a study that will help solve the problem or answer the question? Is the solution or answer of importance? Are you interested in solving the problem or answering the question? Try to pick problems that are neither too hard nor too easy. One of the major issues facing graduate students is the identification of a research problem. Problems may arise from real-world settings or be generated from theoretical frameworks. A basic requirement for proposing a good research problem is in-depth knowledge about the area of interest. Ironic to take research methods in the first year, as many of you are new graduate students, but is essentially for your success in the academic field. Upon completion of this course, you are expected to want to approach and solve problems in a scientific way, two to search the literature, three to write in a clear scientific fashion, four to understand basic measurement and statistical issues, five to use an appropriate writing style, six to be an intelligent consumer of research, seven to appreciate the wide variety of research strategies and techniques used in an area of study. To better identify a good research problem, you can examine recent journals, consult your advisor, examine recent textbooks, and locate a recent literature review on a topic of interest. Below are the criteria in selecting a research problem. Is the problem in the realm of research? Does it interest you? Does it possess unity? Is it worthwhile? Is it feasible? Is it timely? Can you attach the problem without prejudice? Are you prepared in the techniques to address the problem? A major part of developing the research problem is reading what has already been published about the problem. Whatever the topic, past research is invaluable in planning new research. Reviews of literature serve several purposes. One identifying the problem decide which studies are related to the topic area. You can read abstracts first, then generate several ideas and unresolved questions. In this process, you can consult your professors or advanced graduate students. To developing the research hypotheses or research questions research hypotheses are deduced from theory or induced from other empirical studies and real world observations. For example, in qualitative studies, more general questions often serve the same purpose as research hypothesis. 3. Developing the method to answer the research hypothesis. Review can be helpful in identifying methods that have been successfully used to solve particular types of problems. Valuable elements from other studies may include the characteristics of the participants, data collection instruments and testing procedures, treatments, designs, and statistical analyses. Most important of all, it is very critical to conduct pilot work. 
Before you write a problem statement, you might need to consult secondary sources and primary sources. Secondary sources is the source of data in research in which an author has evaluated and summarized previous research. Some examples are encyclopedias and handbooks, and reference lists. Primary sources are the first-hand source of data in research, or the original study. They are ultimately the most valuable for the research in that the information is first-hand. Most primary sources in a literature review are journal articles. When searching the literature, you will have to determine descriptors or keywords, then search preliminary sources such as abstracts, indexes, bibliographies, library information system. Computer searches, check table of contents of current journals. Later you can read and record the literature. In sum, there are five steps here. Step 1. Write the problem statement. Step 2. Consult secondary sources. Step 3. Determine descriptors keywords. Step 4. Search preliminary sources. Step 5. Read and record the literature. I will use demonstrate how to search the literature using UMN library in class. How to evaluate potential sources. We may first read the abstract. Then ask ourselves does this article relate to your problem? If yes, then copy the article for future reference, read the article carefully and make a note card. Next we will talk about how to write the literature review. The introduction should explain the purpose of the review and the how and why of its organization. Purpose is to demonstrate that your problem needs investigation and that you have considered the value of relevant past research in developing your research hypothesis and methods. You know and understand what other people have done and how that relates to and supports what you plan to do. The body requires considerable attention. Relevant research must be organized, synthesized, and written in a clear, concise, and interesting way. Removing as much jargon as possible, KISS as a basic tenet for writing. Review should be organized around important topic. These topics serve as subheadings in the paper to direct the reader's attention. Thesis two important aspects are criticism, completeness. Criticism demonstrates your grasp of the issues and identifies problems that should be overcome in the study you are planning. Completeness you should demonstrate to your committee that you have located, read, and understood all the related literature. When writing the literature review, you will have to be aware of the below things organize your thoughts, avoid random writing, write clearly, avoid run-on sentences, avoid jargon. Use active voice predominantly, use spell and grammar checks.